Dell embarked on a strategy called AI in, on, and for internally. And really what it resulted in is, is three different levers that we pulled to make sure that we were capitalizing on this advent of technology that could allow machines to be a more full partner in the thinking tasks that we were on. The AI in decision was about saying our products, albeit very good products, leadership products in many areas, were always derived from their hardware and their software. What we realized is that there was a third component. Could you make them smarter? Could you use machine intelligence to basically exceed the capability of the hardware and software all by itself? And it turns out that you can. And today, every product in Dell's portfolio is using machine intelligence in some way to do things like make their batteries last longer, make their precision workstations more adaptive to workloads, make the storage systems have higher IOPS and faster performance. And so from a customer perspective, what that translates into is one of the levers of continuous improvement of our overall portfolio is the fact that we are continuously making the products more intelligent and more automated. And the result is not just faster, better, but in many cases, simpler, less work for you to do to configure the device. We predict in four years or less, the majority of IT capacity will be actually applied in service of delivering outcomes tied to machine intelligence. And so that led us to this idea of AI on, which says we actually need to build products that are designed first to basically deliver the outcomes that an AI system needs. We started building our extreme acceleration servers and the DSS-8440 and a number of products that would make no sense in the traditional world, but a server that's got you know two sockets and 10 accelerators in it makes a tremendous amount of sense if you're running an AI workload on it. So more and more our portfolio, high performance storage, high performance networking, high performance compute architectures, diverse acceleration architectures, and even the software to organize them has become a new category of product. Again, from a customer perspective, this allows you to basically understand that your infrastructure has a new class of workload. And with the Dell infrastructure, you can apply technology that was actually built to run that workload, not just the legacy workloads that preceded it. The AI4 concept was really important to Dell because, hey, we're a big giant corporation that you know exists and does all the things most of our customers do. We have HR and finance and sales and supply chain. And it turns out that AI4 said, well, if we're gonna talk about AI as a business transformation, a productivity improver, why don't we do it inside of Dell? And so we embarked on transformations in almost every one of our business functions. Today, we are using machine intelligence in our supply chain aggressively. I think we have 20 or 30 robotic process automation projects going on at any given time. We're using it in our service organization. We've brought the things that you see, like predictive maintenance or downtime, down dramatically by using machine intelligence to be smarter about how we look at our fleet and understand and predict where failures come from. These are things that from a customer perspective, obviously having better products that make your life easier, having products that were designed to run the workloads that are emerging that are very important to your digital transformation. And then thirdly, knowing that Dell is on the journey with you, that we are fundamentally going through the same challenges and we're working through all the same issues and building algorithms and applying machine intelligence and we're learning lessons as we go, makes us more of a partner which can actually provide advice that's actually very tangible, not academic about how you wanna change your supply chain or how how you want to improve HR, or how you want to make your sales force more productive. And so all that together has turned into a fairly effective AI strategy for the company, which gives me a tremendous confidence that we, we get it. This is existential. You cannot scale the enterprise into an era where AI and ML dominate the demand cycle without moving squarely into the heterogeneous compute world. And so years ago at Dell, we made that move. That's why we built the dense acceleration servers. That's why we invested in companies like Graphcore. That's why we work closely with AMD and NVIDIA and Intel on their accelerator architectures. It's even why we you know, acquired things like Bitfusion, which is a software layer to better abstract accelerators from the VMware environments. And so there's a lot of tools that have made their way into infrastructure, both semiconductor and software, that allow people to now take advantage of this new way of compute, which is a core CPU surrounded by GPUs and FPGAs and IPUs and various other types of processing units that create a kind of diverse ecosystem that NetNet just gives us a more efficient capacity pool to run these new kinds of workloads. So very, very foundational. But again, you, know, you as a customer shouldn't have to deal with this. It's up to us to make sure we're delivering platforms that provide the most efficient compute. And as we move into the AI era, that efficient compute is characterized by a diverse heterogeneous compute environment, which again is very real, but it's also very consumable these days because we've worked as an industry to turn it into products and offers. Many people think that AI and ML implementations are turnkey. 
that you can just take a algorithm and apply it from anywhere and apply it to your business. Well, I will tell you that's not actually true because when you start dealing with machine intelligence, where you're applying it is to your core business processes. There are no two companies that do that exactly the same way. And in fact, that's what makes companies differentiated. And so when you go on the AI journey where you're now not applying it to generic things, you're applying it right to the brain of your company, to the places that make you special and different, what you need is not an arbitrary outcome. You don't need a turnkey product, even though there might be some turnkey products involved. What you need is a partner who knows how to engage and have a conversation with you and fundamentally say, I get it, I've already done it, I have some examples, but by the way, what we're trying to achieve is your outcome, not just some outcome.